In the Treasure Vault book for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, which comes out later this month, Paizo presents alternate rules for crafting, which seek to improve upon the rules in the core rulebook. I'm also going to demonstrate these rules with examples. For D&D 5th Edition players who are checking out Pathfinder for the first time, you'll be happy to hear that there is extensive rule support for crafting in the system. As you can see, magic items have levels and definite prices. There is a default expectation of how much wealth a character of a certain level has. Any character can craft items, you don't need to be a spellcaster, so long as you meet the level requirement of the item, the level of proficiency in crafting required, and you have an item's formula, and there are rules for how to obtain one. And for magic items and other items, you may need a skill feat. If you meet those requirements, you can craft any item in four days, no matter how high level or expensive it is, so long as you pay the costs and raw materials. You pay one half the item's price and raw materials at the start of the process, and then after the four days pass, you do a crafting skill check, check it against a difficulty class for that item's level, and if you succeed on the check, you then have a choice to pay the remainder of its price to immediately complete it, or to spend more time on the item to reduce how much you have to pay to complete it. Because you can reduce that to zero, you effectively can craft something for half its price. However, that may take a long time because you're using the same chart that every character who earns income uses, which could mean you needing many days. But as you can tell, this has all been figured out and there is a harmonious system in place. Crafting earns you no more gold than earning an income. If you critically succeed, if you make the choice to work more days to lower the cost of making the item, you get to consider yourself one level higher on the earn income chart. If you fail, you have to start over, which costs you more days. And if you critically fail, you also lose 10% of the raw materials you supplied. There's no need to hunt for monsters or for GMs to homebrew adventures to allow players to craft these items. Crafting is simply one of the many downtime activities that are defined for player characters. Some items are tagged uncommon or rare, empowering the GM to keep items that might disrupt their campaign out of the game. So it may be strange for D&D players to hear that there have been vocal complaints from some Pathfinder players about the crafting system. There's been anticipation about the Treasure Vault book's alternate rules for crafting for this reason. The first most common complaint is that it takes four days to make even very cheap items. You often hear players saying, it takes me four days to make an arrow. Well, first, the core rules mitigate that problem somewhat by allowing you to make batches of something if it's a consumable. And ammunition comes in sets of 10, so you can make 40 arrows in four days, or four potions in four days. I would also argue that it's not that easy to make arrows from what I've read. I also think it doesn't really present much of a practical problem because if we're talking about arrows and other low-level items, you should be able to buy them in any decent-sized settlement. The real value of crafting in Pathfinder is that it gives a party access to high-level items that it otherwise would not have access to. When a party gets to, say, level 7, 10, 13, and the settlement that they're in is level 6, they're not going to find items that are higher level than that settlement. If the campaign has sufficient downtime, the party can find formulas through adventuring or invent common formulas with this level seven feat and basically access every common magic item in the whole game. Crafting makes it so that the party is not limited to what magic items the GM happens to make available to them. One other complaint about crafting in Pathfinder is that it requires four days in which you're not making any money. It's only after that initial four days that you can start working on lowering its price. Well, the reason for this is the balance of the game. In third edition D&D, you could, if you had enough time, pay only one half the price of any item by crafting it. In order to make the wealth system balanced here, they clearly could not allow that. But why tax crafting four days? Well, I would just point out that if you already had access to the item, you would be buying it. The value you get from crafting is getting access to an item. That is what the four days pay for. So the decision to make all crafting four days for 
getting those items that really matter in a campaign is that all items, even very high level 20th level items, require only the same four days. So I've defended the core rulebook system for having four days to craft things. However, if there's a way to allow for faster crafting in some instances while maintaining the decisions that have been made for balance, why not do that? So the Treasure Vault book coming out later this month presents alternate rules that try to serve that purpose. Treasure Vault has this chapter, Crafting Alternate Rules. The majority of pages are actually devoted to supplemental systems, including nature crafting, which allows you to grow magic items, story-based crafting, which gives guidance and also some charts for GMs to design adventures, for players to seek out equipment or components for crafting magic items, as well as a chart of random downtime events. But the alternate rules that I've been building up towards only take up one and a half pages. I'm also going to demonstrate these rules with examples. There are two parts to these alternate rules. First, setting up. This chart varies the number of days to set up the item depending on whether it's consumable or permanent and depending on what level the item you're making is. A consumable item of your level is four days. A permanent item of your level is six days, which in a system that's supposed to quicken crafting is that's a surprising choice. First, I would say that if you're in a campaign that is crafting permanent items, you're probably getting sufficient downtime to accommodate that. And four and six is, that's probably not tipping you over the edge so that it's a deal breaker, let's say. But also we will see why the number six was chosen soon. And if the item is one or two levels lower than the crafter, the number of days goes down by one. If it's three or more levels below the crafter's level, it is two days lower. But it doesn't end there. If you become an expert in crafting, and if you're not familiar with Pathfinder, there are four levels of proficiency. There's first trained, then expert, then master, then legendary. So if you're that second level of proficiency, you can reduce this number of days by one by increasing the difficulty class by five. Remember, you have to do a crafting check at the end of the setup. If you're a master in crafting, you additionally have the option of reducing it by two days by increasing the DC by 10. And if you're legendary in crafting, you can reduce it by three days by increasing the DC by 15. Now, what happens if you reduce this number to zero? Well, then it becomes effectively a half of a downtime day by becoming four hours. So here's the reason for why this was a six. If you're crafting a permanent item that is three levels or lower, and you are legendary, you can reduce this four to one day. They decided that any permanent item should always require at least one workday. The second part of these rules, finishing the item, is for after you make that successful crafting check. If you decide to spend more days working on the item to lower its ultimate price, you have the option to rush the job now. You have to be at least an expert in crafting, but there is some risk involved. You have to do a flat check, which in Pathfinder means a simple d20 roll without any bonuses or penalties. The DC is equal to 10 plus the item's level minus your crafting proficiency bonus. Your proficiency bonus is your level plus the number from your level of training. Being trained adds two, being an expert adds four, being a master adds six, and being legendary adds eight. If you succeed, the item is fine. If you fail, it has a quirk, something that is flavorful, but not necessarily detrimental. And if it's a critical failure, the item is ruined or there might be a curse. There's a rare skill feat given here, if a GM wants to include it, that basically adds another row at the bottom of that chart for when an item is six levels lower than the casters. Notably, it says that if you can reduce the crafting time to two hours, that you can do so during an adventuring day, implying that you need this feat to do so on an adventuring day. I think there's an important consideration there. Let's say, for example, a party wants to spend four hours in the morning to craft a bunch of minor elixirs of life. 
do you want them to have that easy access to such items? I think there's a reason why this text is in a rare skill feat. So I thought it'd be helpful to illustrate these rules with some examples. We're gonna start with some consumable items and then look at some permanent items. But let's start at level one. Here's our example of 40 arrows, which in the game costs four silver or 0.4 gold pieces to buy. Because they don't have a listed level, they are therefore level zero, and therefore one level lower than this character. I've added the chart from the treasure vault. So it only takes three days, as you can see, to set up making this lower level consumable. The standard DC is 14, and with your crafting skill of plus seven, you have a 70% chance of succeeding and a 20% chance of critically succeeding. Then after those three days, you get to spend the remaining price to finish, or you can work one additional day to add what a level one trained character can earn an income per day, which is 0.2 gold, to finish the 40 arrows. Next are minor elixirs of life, which heal you 1d6. And if you were to craft four of them, setup would be four days because it's equal to your level. They're level one items. Together, they cost a total of 12 gold. So you pay up front one half of that, six gold. Your chances of succeeding are slightly less. And to complete the item, you can spend six gold immediately or work 30 days. Or work, Megan, I'm trying to record. Or work 30 days to finish the value of the item. If you critically succeeded, you could work 20 more days to do so, earning what a level two trained character would earn if they were earning income per day. Our character then becomes level four, and they're now an expert in crafting. Their bonus for crafting has now become plus 12. They've also taken the assurance feat. Assurance is a very valuable skill feat in the game for downtime activities. You have the choice of not rolling the d20 and simply getting an automatic result that is 10 plus your proficiency bonus. It does not include your ability bonus, which in this case for crafting is your intelligence bonus. It's lower than your average, but you have the assurance of it being a guaranteed result. So those same 40 arrows now take only two days to set up, and you can use the assurance feat. You are guaranteed to succeed on your check after those two days. If you wanted to do it faster because you're an expert, you get to reduce it by one day and increase the DC by five from 14 to 19, and you still have a very good chance of succeeding. Finishing these 40 arrows is the same as at level one. Just as with the arrows, you guarantee you'll succeed if you give yourself two days to set up. But because these elixirs are more expensive, more days are required to finish the value of the items. If you succeed, you need eight more days of work. And if you critically succeed, you need six more days. This is a vast improvement over the number of days needed previously. Before I go ahead, I should let you know that I corrected this DC here. Now that this character is an expert, they have the option of rushing the job and working twice as fast, essentially. And the DC is 10 plus the item's level minus the proficiency bonus of the crafter. So if they succeed on that flat check, they lower the number of days by one half. As long as they don't roll that one, they're going to have a successful item. Next, our character becomes level seven, which is the earliest level they can become a master in a skill. They choose to become a master in crafting, naturally. They also can easily afford this magic item called Crafter's Eyepiece, which gives them a plus one item bonus to their crafting modifier. Because they're level four, these arrows now have a base setup time of two days. However, they can lower that to one day and they can still use Assurance to succeed on the increased DC. So they definitely want to do that if they want to have a guaranteed result. They also, because they're a master now, have the option of increasing the DC by 10 to lower it from one day to lower it further to four hours. There are similar chances of success for the Elixirs of Life. And because they're a higher level and master, it takes only three additional days to finish the Elixirs. And even less if they critically succeed or if they rush the job. And now the DC is minus two. So there is no chance that they will critically fail now. 
their item will do what's intended, barring maybe a quirk. So that illustrates how consumables can be done faster and faster as you level up. And as my recent video shows, there are many consumable items that are lower level than the party that remain quite useful. Now we look at some permanent items and I jump to level 11 because of what I said earlier. The value of crafting in this game is getting access to magic items that are high level that you might not have access to from shopping. So the item I chose here is the weapon property rune Holy, which does 1d6 good damage against evil creatures. Our level 11 character has higher bonuses and also has a intelligence of plus five now from their ability boosts that they gained at levels five and 10. As we see from the setup time chart, this rune, which is the same level as the crafter, requires six days of setup. They also have to put forward 700 gold, one half of its price. They have a very good chance of succeeding. If they want to reduce that by one day, they have a significantly smaller chance, and by two days, even smaller. With a successful crafting check, they can spend 88 more days to lower the cost of crafting this item. With a critical success, that becomes 70 days. They probably want to rush the job with a DC4 check to cut that number of days in half. Our character now becomes level 15, which is the earliest level you can become legendary in something. They will be legendary in crafting. And they will also get the greater crafter's eyepiece, which gives a plus two bonus to crafting checks. Their bonus is now a plus 30. And their assurance skill feat now gives them a guaranteed result of 33. I put a note here that a level 15 character will be earning about 3,250 gold during level 15. That corresponds to this chart from the core rulebook. This rune is now several levels lower than the character. So the base setup time is four days. They also can use assurance to automatically succeed at three days when the DC is increased by five. But now because they're legendary, they can lower the base setup time by three days down to only one day. However, that will be a difficult check. Though it might be worth doing because if they only have a regular failure, they just have to start over again. Then when they succeed, they either pay the remainder or they can work 25 days to finish it. And if they succeed, they definitely will want to rush the job because it's a now a DC minus two. 13 days to finish the item and nine days if they had critically succeeded on the initial check. And to compare it to what we saw earlier, let's look at what this character can craft in the way of elixirs of life. They can craft a level nine moderate elixir of life, which heals 5d6 plus 12 hit points. The base set of time is only two days, but they can use assurance and succeed on it after only one day. With a very good chance of success, they can reduce that to four hours. And here are the number of days needed if they want to finish the item. So in summary, I like these rules. I think these will be the default rules in my campaigns. They give characters a way to do crafting more quickly. Yes, there is an increased base setup time if you're trying to craft a magic item close to your level, but the ability to rush the job is going to reduce the total amount of time needed to craft if you have enough days in your campaign. Some might be concerned that the ability to rush an item effectively allows the crafter to quote unquote earn income twice as fast, but I think that is okay because it's resulting in an item, not in gold. An item that could be sold at one half the price if sold anyway. And it's resulting in an item of your level at the highest, so it shouldn't be game breaking. Well, anyway, <laughs> those are my thoughts. I have been Ronald, the Rules Lawyer. If you enjoyed this breakdown, like and subscribe. I plan to do my series of videos helping D&D 5e players learn about Pathfinder 2e. Ring the bell if you want to get the notification about those. Also join my Discord where you can find other people who want to play the beginner box and support my Patreon. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.